Today we're going to be looking at a Panasonic 42-inch uh, plasma TV. The problem with this one, it won't turn on, and uh, there's no standby light at all. So it's likely that the power supply itself is at fault, rather than some other part of the set. Uh, unfortunately, somebody has snapped off the uh, aerial connector, so that's going to be another section that will, if we get the TV going, we'll have to fix that. Um, there's still a lot of people here use uh, um, terrestrial broadcast. Uh, we're digital here, um, but uh, a lot of people still use it free-to-air digital. And um, uh, yeah, it has plenty of HDMI inputs. Um, it has a lot of uh, um, RCA uh, inputs as well. And uh, so it's an older set. I think it's probably about, I'd probably say about four or five years old. Uh, has a uh, SD card slot, but it does not have a network connection. So it uh, predates uh, smart TVs as such. So the model is a uh, THP 42U20Z. Um, it has the built-in Freeview digital tuner, and uh, down in the corner it has, uh, um, what do we got here, two, we've got a monitor out, and uh, an AV in, a component in, and uh, another AV in, and on the side there's another couple of inputs and buttons and things. So if we're lucky, we're going to be able to... Uh, take the back off while the stand is attached and keep the thing upright uh, make life a lot easier and the guts of it looks like most other plasma sets uh, out there driver board down the side uh, both sides uh, tuner board over the far right on the bottom um, well the processing board does everything power supply in the middle and that's where we're going to start our investigations. So firstly, with a completely dead item, we want to check uh, the fuse. So listening for this beep, which means we have a short circuit, continuity, and what we have here is the mains cable coming in uh, from the rear connector and two fuses, so we'll check uh, both of those first. That one's fine. And that one's fine. Um, which means there's likely no fault on the primary side. Uh, if your bridge rectifier, for example, had shorted, that would have been taken out the fuse there. Uh, oh, there's one other fuse over, over up there. So we'll check that one. And that one's all right. Uh, and there's a fuse on the output over here. Sorry, I can't really get a better camera angle, but just hiding up in the top here. And that one's okay too. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's going to be our high voltage out anyway. Um, these connectors are our low voltage to the uh, processing board. Uh, there's no fuse for those. Um, there may be a fuse on the, the processing board, but at this stage I don't think we've got any um, primary switching going on, given that we have no standby light, but uh, let's plug it in and start probing voltages. Well, the next thing I'm going to check will be the um, bridge rectifier there. Uh, you can see it says plus in, on the bottom pin and minus on the upper pin with AC inputs in the center pins. So uh, let's just check that we're getting our uh, 300 odd volts or so across that. And uh, that would indicate that this main capacitor is charging up. And if that's charged then it's going to be uh, a switching issue across our likely that transformer or or that transformer there. 
Uh, there's a couple of devices it looks like that do that. On this one we have a uh, multi-legged device and on up here we've got a couple of uh, standard um, likely MOSFETs. Um, they could very well be switching uh, to create our v, is a VA and VS uh, values for the panel. Um, may have that term a little wrong, but don't know it starts with a V. <laughs> um, normally you'd see it on the board. Yeah, VSUS. And uh, that's probably generating those because if we look at the where things are and the layout of things, we've got we have flow coming through. Uh, probably through to there, and then on the bottom side we're going to have that switching that one to create our 5 and 12. Um, most likely. Do they have it printed on there what values on the secondary? No, they don't. Uh, not even on the, the processing board, so let's proceed. Now I think we're going to find our 300 odd volts on this uh, bridge rectifier because when I plugged in the cable um, I heard a spark which is um, quite common for the initial charge up uh, of these things so we've got one lead on there and there and we have is 400 millivolts and slowly climbing so there's nothing coming out of that bridge rectifier at all really that's interesting let's make sure we've got enough going into it we'll go uh yeah where are we ac ac volts we'll just measure the two center pins there make sure that we've got 240 going in we have one volt going in so it looks like we have a primary side uh, fault there. Let's measure across our um, live and neutral and just see if we've got 240 at the end of the fuses. We do, 238. That's alright. So somewhere between the end of the fuse and that bridge rectifier we have a very high resistance. And I can see a power resistor that could have gone high. I'm just going to have to follow the circuit now and figure out what goes where. Now I know what you're thinking. There's a uh, on-off switch on the front. But it's not in line with the main side of things. And actually heads on up to the secondary side of things. But there is a... We'll follow this up here. So we've got our mains input and they've kindly painted on the top side uh, where the tracks go so that'll help us follow it a bit so we come into this um, choke here we're actually coming on both sides through there and out into another choke and uh, from there we've got uh, one line comes up through to here and across to one side of our bridge rectifier and then the other one comes up through the choke and it goes up to this one side of this power resistor which goes into this relay and the other side of this resistor goes into this relay and tracks on down through to another bridge rectifier oh, and another fuse how about that so we've got kind of an intermediate uh, mains soft on I don't know if soft on as such um, there so so we're feeding this one probably before any other okay let's have a closer look at that one didn't see him before. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in and check the voltage on this other bridge rectifier here. And we'll see if we have mains. And I'm looking for our 240. 
there we go and on the output we're looking for a DC value and we have 200 and, oh, 325 yep that's to be expected so we have our secondary there um, so this is obviously powering our startup circuit there must be a signal line that buzzes off up to those other relays um, and then only switches those on when when needed to drive the panel that makes a lot of sense okay so now we need to follow this uh, this little primary standby circuit and find out um, why it's not switching um, if we have a look over here so we've got our bridge rectifier there guarantee you it's feeding that capacitor and that IC down there will be an all-in-one switching regulator which will be switching across that transformer which will be supplying somewhere and quite likely this is the wire that goes down to the front panel on off switch so that's probably feeding our standby rail which will come out the switch back up through here possibly from there to the other relays uh, or the relays may be controlled by the uh, processing board um, yeah that might just switch on the processing board but uh, we'll need to probably gonna have to take this all out now and, and, and try and trace it through and um, yeah but we'll take some more measurements on this side and see if we've got anything coming out um, I would say this would be the cap for the startup side uh, one rectifier diode there into here and off into wherever so let's do that and uh, I think so what I'll do is I'll measure um, I'll, I'll start with the output of this we'll see if this is creating a voltage first so I'm going to put my meter on a uh, one of the screw heads that's our ground and we'll be checking the end of the diode there and seeing if we have a signal coming off that and it looks like we have a steady half a volt almost which is really not going to do a great deal so now we need to look back at the primary side there here's the uh, IC in question it's an MIP2K2 which is um, specifically developed for uh, switching controller uh, this one is good for up to 5 watts output power um, has a 16 and a half ohm uh, on resistance looks like it oscillates about 100 kilohertz there's a bit of a waveform here's a bit of a diagram yeah. Where's, oh, there's our pin out there, not very um, obvious is it? Uh, what do we got? I think pin 1 looks like ground and uh, pin 4 looks like uh, our positive in pin 5 is the drain pin 7 and 8 are the source and in the circuit pin 5 is going to the transformer uh, winding with the other end of the winding going straight to uh, the filter cap so let's just make sure that we have a voltage on pins 1 and 4 so that we know that this chip should be trying to work and there's not a great deal of info about what it should be although I think it's probably designed to run pretty high voltage being on the primary side I go oh, they must drop it down surely what do we got it's 
very minimalist data sheet. So I just remembered my old scope has a DC input. So I am now running this off the bench supply, making it uh, completely isolated from the mains, and I can now probe the primary side of the circuit. Right, I'm going to probe the drain of the IC. And there we have a bit of a waveform. My backlighting here is pretty nasty, isn't that? There we go. Let's see if we can get a better angle. There we go. Now, we can see it is switching at a regular interval there with some fluctuation in the pulse width. Maybe not so much the pulse width, but the the time. Um, oh, see, you can see it sort of moving in and out there. So let's take a closer look there. So it is attempting to start up, and what we're looking at is uh, with reference to here's ground. So we've got one, two. Um, close to our 300 odd volts there and it's definitely being pulled to ground at regular intervals so why aren't we seeing anything on the output I suppose there's a chance the transformer itself could be dodgy but uh, let's see if we can see what uh, work out what switching frequency that is so we're at uh, 0.2 milliseconds per division, so we're looking at what, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.45 milliseconds, so uh, we go 1 over 0 0.45 milliseconds is, is about 2 kilohertz, 2.2 .2 or thereabouts, it's fluctuating a bit, so a couple of kilohertz. Let's see what the data sheet uh, suggested this would operate at. So if I'm reading the data sheet right, it says 100 kilohertz. So a couple of kilohertz isn't going to cut it. Now that uh, kind of looks like um, it is switching. So uh, I'm not going to declare that chip is dead yet. But there is a reason why it's not uh, reaching full speed and it's fluctuating a bit um, it's obviously it could be a feedback issue um, and in fact it's probably a feedback issue um, but what's causing that is uh, is what we need to figure out with only half a volt on the output um, hmm well, I suppose the chip could have failed if it's if it's unable to switch uh, at what it should switch at. Um, now there's two pins, one's marked um, FB, which is going to be our feedback, and the other one's marked CL. And I, at this stage, don't quite know what that's for. But um, we'll see if we can't uh, figure it out. Do a bit of research. Okay, let's have a look at what's on this pin marked CL. If we look at, it comes off a winding on the uh, primary side of the transformer. There's another uh, winding there. Now that's picking up um, the same switching pattern at uh, about plus or minus 10 volts. There's a diode in the line and uh, a little capacitor in there, which uh, that's now positive 10 volts. Um, that comes over and it goes through another diode and is sitting at uh, still sitting at 10 volts. Slight fluctuation there as you can as, as the switching waveform changes. If we watch the other side of that diode, we're at uh, 10 volts. There we go, 10 volts, 
and if we go across a resistor that's in there we get down to 2 volts now again I don't know if that's valid or not but uh, we'll check that resistor value anyway it's uh, not really changing a great deal staying fairly steady by comparison but we might as well check that it's a little service mount capacitor there and uh, that resistor and see um, if they appear to be what one might expect well you're not going to believe this as much as I don't believe it here we go I'm going to probe the output and 4.9 volts you and I both saw that wasn't happening about 5-10 minutes ago correct me if I'm wrong but we were only seeing half a volt so I don't know what's happened there but something's decided it wants to work again I think now I have been probing around maybe I've managed to disturb a bad solder joint they all look fine to me so I'm just gonna run around and uh, I'm gonna solder up the chip I'm gonna solder up a couple of little little diodes that I was um, scoping through that feedback winding um, and I'll, I'll solder up the optocoupler um, We'll double check that's going and throw it back into the TV and see if we have some life. So it's back in the set and I've uh, had a bit of a solder up. Like I said, the joints looked fine, but uh, who knows what's going on at the moment. So I'll point you at the meter and we will plug it in and see if we still have our 5 volts. And we have 5 volts. So, who knows what I was looking at before. <laughs> Maybe I've just wasted uh, however long this has been so far. Eh, all due to a bad connection, but I don't think I had a bad connection. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I was using fairly metal. I mean, I'm not even pushing that hard at the moment. It's not like it's dirty or anything. Um, anyway, we shall continue by trying the on-off button again because if um, if that is returned maybe this thing will work unfortunately I can't show you the front because I'm a bit pushed for desk space but I can show you the back and you can watch for the smoke while I look around the front and push the button 3, 2, 1 I heard relays click. And we have a standby light. Where's the remote? Let's turn this puppy on, see what happens. We have a green blinking light. We have a picture. Bloody hell, that was odd. <laughs> so we had no 5 volts, and we probed around for a bit, and thought we saw a bit of a waveform, and suddenly we had 5 volts. Hmm. This is going to take some running and testing and so on, but uh, we might have fixed it. So I watched a movie for a couple of hours and uh, not a problem at all. Uh, it went like a new one. So now we have to turn our attention to the antenna socket and figure out what we are going to do there. Uh, I'm thinking a bit of a workaround with an external socket and just uh, run some coax up into here. Um, yeah, have the other end going to an external socket on the rear panel. It's probably going to be the easiest way of doing it. Um, you're not ever going to solder another connector on there. It would probably 
it'd be a bit too fragile and break off. The metal case is actually uh, bent. I might be able to pop the top of that can off and get a better look at it and just make sure it's not touching anything it shouldn't in there. But um, yeah, an external socket I think is going to be the way to go. Looks okay. It's just a little bent up around here, but there's uh, not really much behind it. There's little uh, coils of wire. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to uh, insert a piece of coax. I'm gonna, um, I'll, I might even solder it back right down onto the board, um, and uh, it'll come out the back. Uh, it'll need to be fed through the rear panel uh, when that goes on. So. Uh, that could be a bit of a nuisance, um, but uh, and then I'm going to have these uh, plastic P clips to hold to hold it on in two places, and uh, make sure that it doesn't get yanked out of the back there. Right, I've decided I'd have to remove the tuner module as it is a standalone module, and the PCB. Uh, the only way to get to it was to remove it, and uh, I can remove now the center pin of the original connector. And um, attach the coax straight into there. One centre pin. And we'll remove the solder from there. Now we'll uh, push the coax in with the centre pin, uh, centre wire through the previous removed pinhole and I'm thinking I will uh, probably just solder the braid down onto the cover which will need to go on first before I get too carried away should have gone for a uh, thinner coax there so very stiff to bend so whether we're going to get uh, a tidy radius out of that I don't know yet but uh, we'll see I can temporarily mount this anyway and if I don't think it's going to work I won't solder all these pins in just yet because it's uh, a bit of a pain to get them all out I had to use a, a hot air gun along there as well as a bit of solder wick but now I think I will solder the braid to the top casing there and see where we're at. Well, my plan has come to an end. So far. This bloody coax is aluminium strands, so I can't solder to it. So that's no good. I'm going to have to go find some good old copper coax I'll be right back okay just gone and got another bit of coax with copper braid so I was able to solder that to the tin to the top and I've already put the lid on but yeah just soldered to the top edge there uh, with the center core through to the board and trimmed off to suit so now we can pop that back in and uh, size it up. It's a bit more flexible than the other one. It is a smaller diameter coax as well. Um, it, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. It's, um, it's only a short run, so it shouldn't really affect uh, signal at all. Um, yeah, let's give it a shot. And I've just dummied it up on the back and it uh, looks pretty good. Um, the cable will be able to come out and route up the side 
and with our cable clamps which I have put on backwards we can just screw that down there like that and that will keep it nice and tight and uh, stop anyone yanking on it and ripping it out and uh, another clamp up the top and then we'll have our plug on the end um, for consumer use got the board back in and just going to plug it in and switch it on and see if the thing still works there's probably no point given the amount of work it will be now well with having to remove the plug every time you want to take the back off it'll be a good idea um, to at least try and make sure it's going to keep working but uh, we'll see if it we'll see if it still works and I'm thinking maybe I should replace the uh, the capacitor on that standby line that 5 volt standby line that um, on the secondary side there although it did test at a very low ESR um, I, I don't know unless it's like half failing and it was causing the thing to not start up but yeah it's a real puzzle and you know the thing was off all night so it had a chance to get nice and cold again um, yeah okay I'm gonna switch it on now listen for the clicks all good we had our uh, standby light come on so we might as well throw the back on it and uh, kick it out the door and there we have the finished product one bit of cable tacked up the side with a plug on the end and it should do the job I'll um, plug it into my aerial and make sure all right let's give it a whirl the tuner should already be fully tuned in green light now what do we got TV Well, that's a good start. What channel are we looking at? Huh. Cool. No on screen display. I would have thought there'd be something. Okay, let me do a bit of a tune in. There we go. Just like a new one. Looks like Supergirl. Thanks for watching. Uh, not really a, a, a good video in my opinion. Um, stuff shouldn't fix itself. I'll be sure to do a follow-up one though if I ever see this come back with the same fault. Uh, there'll have to be a reason for it, but I don't know. As I said, I've soldered up all the joints. Um, I can only think maybe there was a bad joint that wasn't vis visually bad, that, that poking it with the um, scope probe and multimeter uh, showed it showed it up but uh, I mean yeah once it's it was running it's fine um, still inclined to think that maybe uh, that uh, um, switching I see uh, was bad or is slowly going bad although um, stuff usually just is or isn't it's not halfway in between but anything's possible uh, don't have a can of freeze spray to hit it with to see if that has any effect um, yeah, we'll take it as it comes. Thanks for watching.